Irma is now the strongest hurricane to ever plow into the Leeward Islands. Yesterday, we mentioned only Hurricane Allen from 1980 was stronger in recorded history for the Atlantic by five miles per hour. Irma today, however, has surpassed Allen by continuing to churn for over 24 hours with winds above 180. Allen never did that. We are going to get in closer now and take a look at this massive eye that was 23 miles in diameter. Yesterday, expected it to swallow up Barbuda, St. Martin, and Guilla. Communication is out. Power is out. Until the back edge slides through these islands, aircraft will not be able to get up to assess the damage from above. I'm sure civil emergency management crews are on the ground trying to assess the damage, but we have had no contact. The system is moving at 16 miles per hour. Remember, Harvey only moved at two or three. We could outwalk it. But on Barbuda, if you look at the winds, gusts 118, 27, 131, 151, 154, 155, and then the instrument broke. That's how massive the storm is. Four to six foot storm surge on the northern coast of Puerto Rico. The center is now 55 miles from San Juan. Hurricane force winds are spreading across the island. So, again, heavy amounts of rain, mainly in the mountainous areas, could cause obviously some landslides, flash flooding, and a concern on the coastline. Warnings now in the Turk and Caicos. They're expecting a storm surge of 20 to 25 feet because they're going to be in the north and northeastern quadrant. That's where the winds and the winds are going to be a little stronger in those surf waves as they crash into that area. Here is the change. Now, from last night until this morning, the National Hurricane Center. Shifted the center. Notice where we have our little category four in southern Florida. Shifted about 60 to 70 miles eastward. They have left the cone of uncertainty stretching west. That gives us that window if the system decides to edge that direction. But they also have extended that cone of uncertainty further eastward, which may now tell us if it's continuing to trend eastward. Maybe we're looking at a landfall either on of Miami, along the east coast of Florida, or into the Carolinas. Let's break it down a little closer for you and look at these spaghetti plots. Another change is this. Yesterday, more of the models moved in to Cuba. The higher terrain with the mountains over 6,000 meters would shred the system down and maybe break it down to a category two. Most of the models do not interact with Cuba now, so it sustains its strength over the very warm waters. Still, sometime Saturday, a turn to the north. And now, with that shift eastward, it looks like Monroe County, Miami Dade, right on to Miami, maybe even making its way along the coast. Possibly back over water around Cape Canaveral, slides into Savannah, Georgia. If I show you quickly what the models are doing, again, let's just go ahead and pull up the U.S. and the European. They're on top of each other right now. Let's put this into motion. You're going to see no interaction with Cuba. Here is landfall near Miami. It continues to make its way northward. Both models carry it back over water and then into Georgia and the Carolinas. We've got an interesting situation right now, Wolf setting up because. We now have Jose back behind the system as a hurricane and another one. But just to remind you of what Matthew did along the coastline, $15 billion in economic losses, and that was just off the coast. Guess what? Katia just became a hurricane. In the southern Gulf of Mexico, we have three. It has not happened since 2010 when we had Carl, Julia, and Igor, I believe it was. But Jose may become a major category. Follow suit and come very close to those northern islands again of the Lesser Antilles before turning northward. This is getting crazy, Wolf.